Hello, campers! I am the Canadian Beaver, also known as Smiling Scott. With Canadian Thanksgiving already gone and passed, we are now enjoying this perfect Canadian fall or autumn season. The leaves have already changed their colors to beautiful oranges, reds, yellows, and we are just enjoying this beautiful season. It's uh, getting a little bit colder and there are no more mosquitoes, thankfully. I guess you can say I'm happier than a beaver in a pile of logs. For those that do not know me or don't know what the channel is about, well, I'm a stealth camper who loves to go out into beautiful mother nature and enjoy what she has to offer. I love to go camping, stealth camping, and kind of get into a little bit of trouble while doing so. Lately, I have been thinking about a fellow stealth camper by the name of Steve Wallace. Welcome to Camping with Steve. I have been a loyal fan like thousands and thousands of viewers just like you all around the world. And you know what? I remember watching Steve Wallace right from the beginning when he was just panning for gold to get rich. Well, we're, we're out panning for gold. Uh, it was a nice day so we thought we'd come and just run a few little pans for fun. I even remember Steve when he was trying to teach me how to make the perfect fish and chips. Oh hi, welcome to Cooking with Steve. Today we're going to be making french fries out of potatoes with a deep fryer. Now if you've tried this before and you've had crappy results, it's because you've probably tried to bake them in the oven, or you've only fried them once at a high temperature, the outside's been burned or really dark, and the inside's been raw and barely edible. So. This is for a fish and chips recipe. This will give you nice British pub style fries. So hopefully they taste all right today. Mm -mm -mm. That looked very delicious. Steve, we're still waiting for that recipe for that extra saucy, perfect tartar sauce. Steve continued to pan for gold and do some more of his cooking episodes. But you know what really piqued my interest? was when he started to do his boondocking documentary. It was about two years ago, and uh, just after Christmas, I had, I'd had it with my girlfriend, I'd had it with my job, uh, my friends, and uh, I packed up my car in 15 minutes flat and moved out to the coast. I just drove my car out here, left my job. I didn't know what I would do. And uh, a couple months in, sleeping in the car wasn't working for me. I felt homeless, I, I was homeless. And uh, I saw an ad for an RV for a thousand bucks and that's what I've been driving and living in since, on and off. But for the most part, uh, it has been home and it's worked out well. So, I don't know where my car is now. It got repossessed, but uh, they're probably looking for me. The Boondocking documentary was a nice little reminder how life can be simple. And we saw how Steve was able to explore the different kinds of terrain, mountains, all in Canada's west coast. We even saw Steve trying to build a truck camper for his truck. And that was for him to save some money to go to school. And we're actually going to start re rebuilding this thing. You right? can see how bad it is here. We're gonna... This is... We're going to get it done. But we've never really seen him finish it quite yet. Instead, we saw a spark ignite in Steve when he started to go outside with his big ice fish hut and be able to try out his new camping stove. Oh, hey guys, it's Steve from Boondocking. Camping with Steve and Boondock Talk and all that other weird stuff. Uh, tonight I'm sleeping in this ice shack out in my backyard. I'm gonna set it up as a hot tent 
and the reason I'm doing it tonight is because it's going to be minus 33 degrees Celsius. Not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. I'll put that below probably, maybe. But uh, I could have a fire in there. Test out that Alpine Camp Chef stove to the fullest potential. And I hope that thing is going to keep this thing piping hot because it is freezing out. It was a great night to test out his tent and camp stove because it was minus 33 degrees Celsius and man that was cold. I even loved the little experiment he did with throwing the boiling water in the air. You really got to go check out that video. This was of course in preparation for his eight week school training course to better himself. And you know what? During those eight weeks, man, did he ever try different things. He tried different meals, cooking and everything like that. And it was so amazing to see how he grew throughout those eight weeks. From then on, it looked like Steve caught the camping bug. And then we were privileged to see him go up into the mountains and dodge some bears with his trusty bear spray. Uh, of course I get bear spray too. So triple triple threat approach. Warn them when we get here with the horn. I've got the, the bear banger if I see one and I really want it to shoot. Uh, I'll give, try and film a video of it before I get them to go away. And then, you know, the last line of defense, of course. And Thank goodness we never saw him use it or even him trying to pee on the electric fence. Do you think a fence like that would actually work? Oh, absolutely. Uh, really? As long as you don't keep food in there, they're not interested in coming in and it's one extra deterrent. That's a great idea. Fantastic. We were all then in for a big surprise when Steve did his first stealth camp in an urban area. And I'm ready to do some urban stealth camping. I'm going to get into the forest quickly because this is super suspicious with this humongous backpack. But I'll explain a little more about it to what I'm doing and let's go camping. I was for sure that a dog was going to walk by, come right in and sniff him out. And I was wondering how the heck was he going to weasel his way out of that one. While I was watching Steve, I soon realized he was doing the exact same things that I was doing, but I just wasn't filming it. And he was doing things that I loved myself. Steve, in a way, kind of sparked a flame inside my heart and got me to get off my couch and go outside. Steve basically started a movement that tons of people really enjoyed doing or even watching on YouTube. I loved how Steve went out and did so many stealth camps. Uh, one that I can remember is the U-Haul truck one. Today it is cold. It's about minus 40 degrees Celsius, which is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit as well. That's where they both meet up. So with that extreme weather, I'm actually going to hunker down tonight in a U-Haul van because the price is right at $19.95 in town plus kilometers if I don't drive too far and it's a lot safer than going into the river valley to play cat and mouse with the park rangers because it's this is serious weather people do die out here so until i'm more experienced than this temperature with just what i can carry in a backpack i'm gonna be in here for now i am so happy steve that you did not get in that much trouble with that company we were even blessed to watch steve go out and camp in a roundabout Right behind me is the perfect roundabout. I crawled in there the other day to see if it'd be possible, and there's just enough room. It's not gonna be big enough for a tent or a hammock or even a cot, but on the ground, I should be just fine. Thank goodness those city workers came a bit later and you got out of there when you had the chance. Also, Steve was able to even do a billboard camp. I asked the universe, please give me a sign if things are gonna get better anytime soon. Then I drove past this sign, and I think I know just what I need to do. He even camped in a place that was made out of garbage. Uh, known locally as Rust Rock Cathedral or The Thing or Garbage Castle, this is a sculpture made out of stuff people have dragged out of the river. And of course, we can't forget the storm drain one. Welcome to Camping with Steve. We're going to camp in a culvert tonight. All of us were even lucky to see the small town of Camrose. 
There is so much traffic here and I want to sneak in when it's not so suspicious. So I'm acting like I'm just filming something about the town. They're gone, let's go. And Steve has a little knack of always being able to elude the police. Police station right there. I'm gonna park out along the other side of it and I'm just gonna camp there for the night. This is completely blacked out. No amateur hour this, uh, this week because I really, you know, I don't know if they stop by, who knows? Uh, they're gonna be curious if they see, so who knows? Anyway, let's go. And also even camping in the middle of a highway median. The poll results showed that you guys wanna see me sleeping in a highway median. I'm gonna do this safely, so I've picked a good one that shouldn't be too much danger from a truck or something careening off the road. Steve did so many more stealth camps, such as camping in an airport parking lot, camping uh, next to a highway rest stop. He did so many stealth camps that I can go on and on and on about. But what really made me a fan of Steve was his message about bringing back camping for the people. I'm gonna <laughs> take it back camping for the people here. With the changing of times, inflation, and people just trying to make a buck, Steve was able to teach every one of us that we can go out with any type of items we have in our own household. You didn't have to go to those fancy camping stores and buy the 200, 300 sleeping bag. No, you could camp with any type of items. Steve showed us many different creative ways and unique ways of stealth camping or even camping alone. But you know what? I bet you all those people walking in those uh, designated campgrounds, they probably did a second look while walking by his campsite. That looks horrible. From the road, it looks like I'm butchering a hitchhiker. I tried to get a hold of Crazy Neighbor to see if he wanted to come on this trip. However, now that I think about it, two people laughing from behind a tarp, one calling the other Crazy Neighbor, might almost be worse than dead silence coming from behind the tarps. Steve even showed us how to even stealth camp or camp with just an umbrella. Isn't that sweet? At least he was somewhat protected from the rain. Man, Steve even camped out in his own homemade pop-up tent. Hey there, we're camping in an actual campground today. I know, hard to believe. But the reason for that is... I got a pretty obvious shelter that would really stick out if I was camped somewhere trying to do it stealthy. But we are all set up here. If I can remember how to put this up, it's been a while. And Steve even tried to camp in one of those emergency blankets that you get in a survival kit. I'm experimenting with something I'm probably going to add to my kit and that is a shelter. This little survival reflect tent thing. Um, it looks pretty good. Apparently there's enough room in there for what, one person in the gear uh, and of course I'm in <laughs> a regular campground full of very nice fifth wheels and RVs and I'll just turn some heads here and set this little thing up. I also have never seen another man use tarps in so many different ways. My goodness. Welcome to Camping with Steve. We got two SUVs and a tarp today, so we're gonna call that a shelter. Let's uh, get the party started. This weekend, unfortunately, I was not able to go out stealth camping. So to get my fix, I'm able to go out in my own backyard and do a camp out. 
So before I have a step two or my preferred beverage of the hour, I need to set up camp. Thank goodness I know some magical words that will speed up the process a much faster. Liver jello. Ta-da! Now that we got that out of the way, I'm able to enjoy, in Steve's words, a step two, or what I like to call the beverage of the hour. Just recently, I was donated some beverages of the hour from uh, a camp counselor called Polita, and she brought these beverages all the way from Sittil, Quebec, Canada. For those of you who do not know where Sittil, Canada is, well, it is far, far, far up north in the Quebec region. And these beers are brewed by a company called La Campagne. Uh, if you can see that right there. And I'm going to try this one first. It is uh, Marzen and it's for Oktoberfest. Well, we're in October right now, so this will be a perfect start, uh, perfect one to use for today. Since I'm doing a tribute to Steve Wallace himself, I would like to do a cheers to the king of stealth camping. Campers, camp counselors, Stealth Camping Alliance members, or any viewers out there, I would like all of you to get your preferred beverage of choice. It could be as simple as a water, maybe a milkshake, maybe some absinthe, uh, you can have a root beer, or whatever floats your boat. So everyone, get your preferred beverage, and let's say, to the uh, cheers to the one and only Steve Wallace. Cheers. Oh, delicious. Thank you, Camp Counselor Polita, for donating these amazing beverages. Uh, this one it goes down really nice and smooth, and I can't wait to try the next two. Thank you. Up here in Canada's National Capital Region, the temperatures are starting to get colder. It is fall, or if some people call it autumn, and you know what? Some days it could be so beautiful. We get weather from 20 degrees Celsius and then it drops to about zero or minus five degrees Celsius at night. Right now, as I'm talking to all of you, it's about 18 degrees Celsius outside. It's perfect. I'm in uh, my t-shirt and enjoying this fall day. But it could change very quickly. So this could be a perfect time to start a campfire. This is another reason why I think Steve is so great. Steve is able to show each and every one of us how to start a fire in a different and creative way. Such as, uh, you know, all the sanitizer we used over uh, the zombie virus or whatever you want to call it, COVID virus. Uh, yeah. Uh, Steve even was able to use his sanitizer to start a fire. Let's see how many squirts we're going to need to get this started. I put in six. <laughs> yep, he sure did. And uh, one that I really loved was when he used the bear bang. Mosquitoes are out, 
So time to start the fire, that should drive them away. Steve. Oh, thanks, crazy Nate. And even showing us how to make an ambient fire. One thing that does work also very well is to start a small fire. So we're going to do that because it adds a nice ambience to the area. And I do this in every one of my videos, so yes, yeah, the torch. a lighter or a match with some dry dry wood and some paper Ooh, I can feel the heat already <laughs> While I warm up next to the fire, you know, Steve has done so many different types of adventures and so many different projects. And one project that I remember him doing was him trying to pretend he was Huckleberry Finn and he made himself a nice raft boat. Hey guys, another crazy adventure here. We are jumping in this raft and we're going up the river as far as we can get. Then we'll turn around. It's really low water right now. So we're gonna see how far we can get. Yes, he did get stuck in the river a couple times, but he was able to get out of it with perseverance and good old crazy neighbor by his side. You know, other projects he has done, oh my goodness, he even bought a short bus. Welcome to Camping with Steve. We got the school bus here and I'm planning to do some stealth camping in it. I don't know yet how I'm gonna make it stealthy, but the first things first is probably window tint. That's gonna help. You know, Steve was even able to acquire land of his own and be able to call it his own acreage. I did get a message from a realtor and someone has accepted our offer on a nice chunk of land that needs a bit of work. So we are in a frantic rush to start moving and we're, we got to pack and everything. We're taking possession in a couple of weeks. So this is all going pretty quick. So things are going to be a little spotty for the next couple of weeks, but it's all this nature out here. Holy. And Steve even did what every boy or man has always wanted to do. Build their own tree fort. So as always, when you're starting to build a tree house, things get out of control. It gets a little more bigger and elaborate than you planned. I just was gonna put the platform up and throw a tarp over top of it, except we found more lumber in the yard and we've just kept building and building and building. To even watching that tree house turn into a fortress. This thing when I left uh, had a collapsed roof with a tarp flapping in the wind and I'm looking at this YouTube video and I'm seeing balconies, uh, overhangs, awnings, uh, windows, a roof. While I wait until the fire dies down, I have a little tip for each and every one of you out there. Uh, on garbage day, sometimes you might see a barbecue at the end of the driveway and someone's getting rid of it. Well, the best thing to do is open up that barbecue and take the grills inside because these are perfect for camping. Uh, I have stopped so many times to grab these things. 
I have so many in my garage right now that I don't even know what to do with them anymore. But I bring them to any camping trip and I'll leave them there for someone else to use later on. But uh, these could be very expensive and it really helps to uh, cook your food on. You just put a couple of logs or rocks underneath and you can cook a decent meal out of them. So if you ever see a barbecue, always make sure to see if they have the grill still in there. All right, I'm gonna wait till this dies down. It doesn't look like anytime soon, but I'm enjoying the nice warmth it's putting off right now. Well, it looks like the fire has finally died down and it is starting to get dark already. It is already 6.30 p.m. here in Canada's National Capital Region. And you know what? I think this is the best time to cook Steve's favorite camping meal. Perfect. Smokey's cooking. So that's awesome. And I gotta dig into these here right away. Yes, that's right. I got myself some Smokies too. So let's put these on the grill here. Ah, might as well throw them all on. Oh, beautiful. And we will saute them in a nice beer from Sittil. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> oh, these look fantastic. It's caramelizing just perfect. All right. These look fantastic already. And you know what? I even went out today to buy some freshly baked buns uh, right from my local bakery. So we're going to use these buns because uh, I know how Steve Wallace loves his. Uh, unfortunately, they don't uh, put a cut in it, so you have to do that yourself. And man, it is cutting perfect. Look at that. Nice and fresh. Looks like these are fantastic. I hope you can see that because these look flipping amazing. Nice smokies. I'm going to put them back on there. Stick it in <laughs> the bun. And of course, all I need is just some mustard. Wow, this looks fantastic. All right, campers, viewers, bon appetit. Oh, yeah, those were delicious. You know what? I threw some more wood on the fire, and I'm just going to sit back. Let those Smokies digest and enjoy this beautiful fall, autumn night. <sighs> Check this out. I'm just, uh, I was in the back and look who I found. <laughs> Hello to you, Mr. Raccoon. It looks like the darkest hours of the night are upon us now. I see the raccoon is still running around somewhere out there. I hear him. Sometimes I'll flash my flashlight and I can see those two beady eyes looking right back at me. Well... I guess it's only one other thing to do is to go to bed, recharge for another spectacular day. <sighs> well, 
it is definitely getting colder and I need to climatize this body for the upcoming winter because I know I'm going to be out there doing many camps this year. Wow, campers, viewers, I hope each and every one of you has a great night and I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning campers. It's time to get up and start the day. Breakfast is ready. Oh yes. Good old coffee for breakfast. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, this morning couldn't be any better. The sun is out and I can feel it on my face and body. Oh, it's not, it's exactly what I needed. Last night, uh, it was chilly. So, uh, my body has to get acclimatized to, uh, for those Canadian winters that are coming up. Yes, Steve has done many winter camping adventures too. And you know what? There's so much I could talk about Steve and this, uh, tribute would be hours and hours long but another great quality about Steve is that he is genuine what I mean about that is that Steve never ever really tried to sell us stuff such as the latest fire starter or uh, camping gear he basically went out spent his own money and used the products that he bought he wasn't donated them or anything like that so uh that's a great thing about steve you know he doesn't uh ask us for much and uh man he gives us so much in return already and that is probably why he reached 1 million subscribers hey everybody welcome to camping with steve I have to thank everybody for getting this channel to a million subscribers. And Congratulations, Steve. But life can be cruel and kick you in the butt sometimes. Steve was on a high and then life just kicked him and brought him to a new low. This is the hardest video I've ever had to film. So I'm just going to take my time and um, pour my heart out a little bit here. Um, on Saturday, beautiful wife and I went to bed. On Sunday only, I woke up. We all still need to keep Steve in our prayers. And next time when you're with loved ones, make sure you give them a big hug and cherish those memories that you create with them, such as going camping. Uh, and this is also a time that we also have to give uh, Steve some time to heal. So, my prayers are with you, Steve, and I hope everyone is praying for you. We all know that these times can be a little bit tricky. We never know what's going to happen next. And the thing about Steve is he will heal eventually. And, you know, there's so many adventures that he will be taking us each on. And, uh, for instance, we're still waiting for that railroad that he's building. Watching the rails? Any time is train time. <laughs> Except right now. Choo choo. That will be definitely a sight to see. I would just like to say thank you, Steve, for all the memories you have given each and every one of us. And we're looking forward to seeing what the future has to hold. I also want to say a thank you to all uh, my viewers, campers, camp counselors, Stealth Camping Alliance and all the people that just take the time to comment and share my videos. So thank you so much. For everybody out there, I hope each and every one of you will enjoy your spring or autumn. Well, I guess if you're in the southern hemisphere, your uh, spring season. But you know what? There's a message that I hope that each and every one of you will take away from this video also is to get off that couch, put one foot in front of the other, 
and always remember to follow your nose.